Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with part two of the 28th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com and today I'm going to be going over hand from my opponent's point of view from a $200 buy-in multi-table tournament I played online a while back. As you see, my opponent does open up to 210 chips. His cards are kind of covering it up with a king-queen suited and I think this is perfectly fine. And J Card Shark calls and in general we know what J Card Shark has in his hand if you watch the previous week, but I would think in general most players' calling ranges here are going to be something like a pair, something like Ace Jack, Ace Ten, um, suited connectors, stuff like that. So we get a flop of Queen Eight Five, and obviously this is a board where J Card Shark could have easily connected, and at the same time we have top pairs. So this is a very good spot for us as Bad Jara because. We have a pretty strong hand, and Jay Card Shark almost certainly has a worse hand. So I think this is a spot where we definitely need to bet. So we do continuation bet 300. Again, the cards are in the way. I apologize for that. Uh, the board's Queen 8 5, two diamonds. So we go ahead and bet with the King Queen, and Jay Card Shark calls. And if we know anything about Jay Card Shark, we know that he's a tiny bit call happy, probably not folding too many made hands at this point. Like if he has an 8, a 5, or a 3, I'm sorry, 8, a 5, or a queen, he's just probably never folding. Same thing goes for a flush draw as well, though. He's not too incredibly aggressive, I don't think. <laughs> Maybe I am. Um, so right here, the, the turn's a 3 of diamonds, which is sort of a blank, but at the same time, it does complete the flush draw. So right here, this is a spot where I think you need to check. And if you do check, it's probably with the intention of check calling. Um, you don't really need to be check folding top pair too often because, you know, a lot of players that will float the flop with something like, I don't know, 9-7, they're going to bet the turn every time here. So I'm, I wouldn't really be looking to check fold the turn. If I check call the turn, I'm probably check calling the river a lot of the time. Uh, you know, whenever you have hands like this, these are good hands to just sort of not fold. And I know it feels really gross whenever your opponent just turns over like, I don't know, 7-6 of diamonds, and they go for super value against you, but a lot of the time they're going to show up with bluffs as well. So right here I like a check from Badjara, and J. Card Shark checks it back. And at this point, you can be pretty confident that J. Card Shark does not have a flush, and he probably doesn't have a queen, because he probably would have bet that for value. So at this point, our hand is almost certainly good. The river's the 5, and this is actually kind of a bad card for Badjara, because... If J Card Shark has an 8 now, he may just find a fold, and if he does have a queen, he's probably going to call, but at the same time, he may value bet it himself if you check to him. So right here, you have to think about what's going to happen if we bet, and what's going to happen if we check. If we check and J Card Shark has a busted draw, he's almost certainly going to bet, so we can check call. If we bet and he has a busted draw, he's not going to bet, so we're going to miss, uh, we're going to miss value. Um... I'm sorry, if, if we bet with king-queen and he has a busted draw, he's just going to fold, so we're not going to get him to bluff with those. If he has um, a queen and we check, he'll bet and we'll call. But if we bet, he'll also call, so that's the same value there. If he has a five and we bet, he's probably going to raise, in which case we can fold. And if we bet, if, he, if we check and he bets with a five, we can call. So we, we get the same amount of money in either way that way as well. So really... And if he has the nuts, we're, we were going to bet he's going to raise, and that's going to be that. So right here, I think the only time we really lose value is whenever J. Card Shark has a busted draw, and we can expect him to bet. Now, let's say J. Card Shark does have, does have an 8, or something between an 8, like eights, an 8, 9s, 10s, or jacks. If he has those hands, or possibly like even 7s or 6s, if he has those hands, he's certainly going to uh, check them back a lot of the time. So if we bet, he may fold those. This is sort of where it really becomes player dependent. If you know J Card Shark will go for a slightly thin value with something like pocket nines or ace eight, then you should probably check because he may fold those to a bet. Um, but if you think he'll just check all those back, then you should certainly value bet yourself. So this is a tricky spot because you don't really know how someone's going to play these hands a lot of the time unless you have some sort of experience with them. In general, because the, the river paired the five, I think I'd go for a, uh, a check. But I think betting is okay as well. So Bad Jara does check. And Jay Card Shark throws out a bet. And as we said, um, you know, whenever you check here, you're never checking with the intention of folding. You're checking purely with the intention of calling. And it's interesting to note that we would play something like Ace Jack exactly the same way, where we bet the flop, check the turn, check the river, but we'd be check folding. So this is a way to also stay very balanced. 
And I think balance is also one of the big reasons to check here because you would check all of your air. And if J Card Shark thinks you're going to check your air, J Card Shark will obviously throw out a bet and try to pick it up. So uh, J Card Shark does bet. Of course, we're going to call. And J Card Shark shows jacks, which is not exactly what I would expect to see. But um, like I said, I, I played the jacks this way, and I think it's perfectly fine. And unfortunately, Bad Jar did happen to have one of the hands that he balanced well with, so he kind of owned me. Uh, that being said, notice how neither of us really lost a big pot here, and I think that's one of the key concepts, is that neither of us put ourselves in the opportunity, or put, gave ourselves the opportunity to go broke. And that's really a key concept in multi-table tournaments. If you don't give yourself the opportunity to go broke, you're not going to be able to go broke, and that's a very, very good thing. And you know, you guys may be sitting here and thinking, Bad Jar lost a lot of value, but you're, there's not a whole lot of value to be had in this spot, and I think he got a decent amount of value, and he should be happy with it. So if you guys have any questions or comments at all about this hand or any other one, please feel free to let me know. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.